Right, guy cat. Thank you, thank you. I'm uh, super appreciative of you taking the time to record with me. Uh, it's it's a, great, it's a great pleasure to have you on my humble podcast. So <laughs> this year, all right. So congratulations first on the win against FC Rosengard. That was amazing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How are you? How's life in Sweden? And are your AFF battle scars healing? Uh, life in Sweden's been pretty good. The summer's actually lasted a little bit longer this year, so unfortunately, it's a little warm in the apartment. <laughs> but other than that, so so far, so good. Took some time to adjust back to this time zone, but as far as scars go, I think some might still be there. <laughs> but, you know, the scabs have all healed, so that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, good, good, good to know. Um, so let's just jump in. Talk to me about your football journey. How did you start playing football? Um, as my mom told me growing up, I kind of started at the age of three. Um, I have two older brothers, and both of them also played soccer. And she said, kind of anything they did, I wanted to. So I kept just pestering her about being on the field with them while they were and. Eventually, I think she kind of just maybe got fed up. She talked to their coach <laughs> and he was kind of like, well, if she can listen and follow directions, then I can be on the field with them. So that kind of started it all there. Nice. And and I've met your mom, Mrs. Gilu, um, mm -hmm. two or three times during the AFF. She's very nice, very fun to talk to. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to um represent the Philippines and were you heavily influenced by your mom how did that decision came about um honestly I think it it all happened so fast at least for me um just kind of I think one year I was just making my highlight reels like I usually do um during my seasons and I kind of just sent it off to everyone and a little talking back and forth and then next thing you know everything last year happened so fast with right. getting and then going to camp as soon as my season ended in November um I remember like talking to my mom and I was so stressed out because I was like trying to deal with all of it in Sweden before even going home and then uh still dealing with it as I got home but thankfully everything worked out and I was able to go with the team to India which in itself was a whole other experience. <laughs> yeah, so um, you're playing in the Malsabenskan. Please correct me if I pronounce any. <laughs> uh, the Malsabenskan. <laughs> uh, highest division of women's football in Sweden. You're doing so well. How's it like um playing on that level? And what are your biggest challenges? Um, I think not just with this league, but obviously I may be. I'm not the biggest in stature. And I know I remember during the game yesterday, I was kind of just joking around with their back line because I think maybe the closest person to my height was one of their center mids. And even at that, she was maybe like five inches still taller than me. And I was just thinking to myself, I was like, do you guys have a height requirement for your team right now? And they were kind of just laughing at me. But, um, you know, everyone's pretty in pretty good shape I would say in the league so just trying to stay on top of it and not just being relaxed especially at the start of the season um as far as fitness goes because we did add more teams to this league this year so we are playing extra games on top of the amount we normally play so just trying to stay healthy through all of that is a bit of its own and another challenge <laughs> right and it really is just to prove that height really doesn't matter in, in football. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> all right. I'm a big Sweden fan. Um, I want to know who is the toughest Swedish national player that you've played against in the league. Um, so this is the bad thing. I'm not really good with names and faces. <laughs> so honestly, the only one that comes to mind would be Sager. But oh, mm -hmm. I know when we played him on earlier in the season, uh, we 
it was a close game, but we ended up losing uh, two to one. And I just remember like she subbed on and she, just like the movement she had on and off the ball and how she was able to control and distribute everything in the center mid. And then I got tucked in more central um, into our midfield and I was defending her for a little bit. And I was, I just remember around like the 80 some minute, I was just dead tired and I just see her taking off in strides and I'm like, gosh, like, excuse my language, but oh shit, <laughs> I gotta go chase now. <laughs> But just definitely her awareness on the field with and without the ball. Yeah, very sacred things. All right. <laughs> what's, the, what's the difference in terms of um, skill level, uh, the, the requirement um, in the national team versus playing club there in, in Sweden? Um, I think, you know, the good thing about our league is we are one of the top women's league so we do attract other national team players so I think in that retrospect we kind of already at least on this professional team like we're introduced to it a little bit like last year we um, had not just the Icelandic but we also had someone from Norway and not just from my team alone there's also AIK they have a few Drew Garden like there's a lot, a lot of teams in this league that have other nationalities playing for them. So I think just being able to play those type of players week in and week out is at least an advantage for us who are on the national team. Right. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, talk about how players should be flexible and should be able to play different roles and positions. Yourself, you've played Many different roles and positions. It, it really varies. What what what's the position you think that you'll thrive in or you're best at? Uh, I don't know. I do get uh asked that a lot, but honestly, I think it varies game to game and team to team. But I think a safe answer is wherever I get to touch the ball the most, I'm happy with. <laughs> um, but uh yeah. I think it's kind of hard to say. It really depends. Does a team have a high line? If so, maybe I kind of uh, like to be starting out wide. So then it's easier to kind of run across the line and then break it down the middle. But if not, maybe like if they like to hold, I think a little more central where I can touch the ball and maybe do some easier give and goes around players. Gotcha. And um, I saw you uh, attended that uh, Beach Hut FC event with Coach Joyce uh, and her team, and you met a lot of younger players. Could you share what was your message to the younger uh, players? I mean, younger players in general who look up to you and your teammates. Uh, I think I touched on it a little bit now, but I know, again, height isn't a factor, but there are people who still look at it like that. So not just having maybe uh, being on a, the shorter side, but just keep working. Um, that tournament that we had in the Philippines, like I was also saying there, that was my first medal and I'm 28 now. So it doesn't matter how long it takes you, as long as you keep on working, there's really nothing that you can't accomplish. Yeah. Perfect, beautifully said. And is there anything you're currently working on to improve your game or how you play in preparation for the upcoming friendlies in, in the World Cup? Uh, a little bit of everything, right? Isn't that the perfect answer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to be more aware of maybe the time and the positioning that I have checking into the ball or making the runs after, not just waiting to see what develops, but maybe kind of taking a bit more assertiveness, I guess, if you'll say, especially in some 1v1 situations. But yeah, a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, per perfect answer. Um, <laughs> my last question before we proceed to the social media questions is, what's, <laughs> what's the backstory um, that, iconic game day poses that you post on Instagram? <laughs> Honestly, that is a very good question. And I don't even know if I know the answer. I think it was kind of just, it started. And then I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe for the second pose, it'll be fun. And then 
I feel like I always get stressed on social media. Like I need the perfect caption. I need the perfect hashtag. And I'm just there sitting and I'm like, I don't know. So then I hashtag if you know, you know. And then ever since then, usually when there's a game day post or something else, you know, I always try and sneak that one in there. And then if you swipe through some photos, you'll see the post stick out somewhere. (laughs) But yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. At least now, now we all know. (laughs) <laughs> to everyone watching because that 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 uh, came a lot with the um social media questions okay let's proceed to the submitted question so from miguel there are rumors that there may be a world cup mode for both women and men's on the new fifa video game how excited are you that the filipinas may be featured on that game honestly so i think i tried to ask them because as soon as i heard about that i love playing fifa and I think it was only because it was maybe the one game I could beat my brothers at on like their Xboxes. And I would always just sprint around on the field, wait until like my person speed went down and then change and then keep on sprinting. But as soon as I heard that, I think I went on to one of their posts and I tried to ask, but haven't gotten a reply back, which is kind of sad. But um, I'm hoping there is because not just for the Filipinas, but I think for women in general to have that many um teams in the game I think is a huge step and I know they've added more leagues into it now also so that'll be pretty cool and then I also wonder if my person will look like me will she have the pink <laughs> crap, you know, the pink juice? <laughs> how fast like, would they put me what would my skill set be <laughs> right right yeah well we're all hoping for that and <laughs> his next question is how do you keep up with your work rate on the pitch? It seems like you never get tired. I think, honestly, I'm a little bit of a salty loser. So if it means like taking an extra sprint when I'm tired, I'm going to try and do that, especially if it's a close game. But no, honestly, I think I just really always want my team to do the best that they can. And if it's if it means me sprinting like 10 yards, five yards, it doesn't matter. I'm going to try and do it, especially if that the end result is us winning. We see that, Kat. You're kind of like an ener- energizer bunny too. When you <laughs> feel it, so, yeah. From Kirk, how is, how is it like playing under Coach Allen? And his second question is, could you share some of your memorable experiences being a part of the national team on or off the field? Uh, honestly, I have nothing but good things to say about, um, coach Allen. As soon as I got there to camp and we had our little talk and we knew everything was going to work out. Um, he was nothing but supportive. There was a little learning curve. I kind of had to catch up to the rest of the girls that were already in California. And I think him and the rest of the staff did a great job of just kind of me kind of like meshing me into that situation and just giving me all the tools that I needed to succeed. Um, he does a really good job of kind of, I don't know, like good pep talks. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but just kind of helping us like understand this is our strength. This is what we need to stick to. Of course we can grow off of that, but um, kind of wants us to remember like, this is what's got us here. So just to keep on working um with that and then there I feel like it's nothing but great memories every time I'm with the national team so far so hopefully that keeps on rolling um even on and off the field yeah just good vibes all around I don't think I really ever see anyone angry (laughs) unless we're losing but so that's pretty good I think right right okay and from Hun Syoji, not sure if I pronounced that correctly. I just want to ask, how do you deal with pressure? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Really, I think I always kind of feel it, but it's more like an excited kind of pressure. Like, I can't believe this is happening. And in the end, I know as long as I work as hard as I can and the team does as good as we can, really, that's all we can ask for in the end. So just taking a deep breath, kind of living in the moment, not stressing about it like beforehand or overthinking things. I think that's the best way for me, at least to deal with it all. Oh, there you go. 
Sorry. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I'm switching between like um the gallery view and a dual view so that when I up- upload it on YouTube, it's just you in here. It's oh my not- god, that's a lot of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So sorry. So from uh Frau and Football, um, how does playing club football and the most fans can compare to playing international football, especially mostly against for now Asian teams? Um, I think really with the Philippines, we've kind of been doing a great job of venturing out, just not playing um, Asian countries, but now during windows, we're playing other confederations. So I think that's been a great help. But like I mentioned previously, I think also having other girls from other nations in Damal Svenskin kind of maybe gives me a little bit of a better edge because I can see okay, maybe this confederation, their playing style is more tailored to this and another one, maybe something else. But I think those set aside, there is something special needed to be on a national team. And we've gotten a glimpse of it when we when the team played Northern Ireland. I think just seeing how that team played versus how um, a Thailand and a Vietnam set up against us and how those quick passes and kind of cheekiness around us they were trying to play and I just I was only able to watch a little bit of the Northern Ireland game but just how quick and how strong and how more um like driven down that they were um but yeah okay yeah uh thank you that's my buddy from football (laughs) from Bolivs Bolivar um this question is, what's your rest and recovery routine or strategy now that you have international camps and games aside from club and training and games? Uh, it's, I think with the games that I've been playing that are coming um, once a week, we kind of have a schedule, at least with our professional team here. Uh, aside from this week and the next, we usually play on Sundays, so... Mondays, we'll all be out on the field, kind of have a light training se- uh, session. And then for those who maybe didn't get as many minutes, they can have a little more intensity. And then Thursday, depending on how our legs feel still from the game, we'll have um, a morning practice uh, to do like more technical work and then some shooting. And then we'll have a Tuesday practice kind of to shake out any remainers from the game kind of little little small sided stuff just to get a lot more touches on the ball loosen back up and get ready and then Wednesdays we kind of have a gym session Thursdays we start picking it back up and preparing for the team um but when we're with the national team it's a lot of we see the physios we see get any treatment that we need get ready for the next day um and of course, since it's now smaller increments of time that we're with them, everything kind of gets jam packed into such a small time window. So you're tr- really trying to absorb as much information and still, while still taking that with you to maybe your team that who plays in a different system, just keeping that in the back of your mind. So then when you come back, you're ready, you're focused and ready to play the next game. Sounds brutal. <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> well, at least for me. Okay. Um, from RD Bedro, where in the Philippines are you most looking forward to visiting for a vacation? Oh, I saw this. I really after um I was just there, me and my mom and cousin were looking at places to go and everyone kept talking about Barakai. But unfortunately, with everything that happened while we were there. We weren't able to make the trip out. So right now, that's top of the list just for a vacation. Like, I don't want to leave. I just want to lay on the beach, relax, <laughs> recover. <laughs> but yeah, definitely there. All right. And if, if you are going there, just make sure. Well, at least this is from me. Um, <laughs> Go to the, the resorts um, on Station 1 or Station 2. or yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure my mom's going to be watching this, so <laughs> listen to that advice. <laughs> yeah, uh, or Station Zero, th- those areas, because it's um, I'm cleaner and you, you'll have more privacy when you're there. 
that is good to know. All right. Okay. And from Andrew Aquino, in your opinion, <laughs> what is the best exercise to enhance speed? With with a comment saying "bilis niya grabe," in 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 English it means you're so fast. Uh I personally really enjoy the explosive work. I think like some box jump, box jumps, or anything jumping wise, kind of hurdles, quick feet. Um, if you want to add weights, you can do um, like a full body one, like hang cleans or just deadlifts, kind of getting that motion down. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> those are okay. those are what's been working for me. So I don't want to give out advice. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Just personal experience. And find out what works for you. Uh, yeah. Andrew. <laughs> from, there you go. Disclaimer. <laughs> from Christine May uh, Valmoria. This is just an inquiry. I notice you and Tane have the same middle names. Are you by any chance related? And she says she thinks you're great. <laughs> Thank you. But I know my mom kept asking me about that. And I was like, oh, I don't know. You're going to have to ask T or her parents. And then I think they were actually there or her family was there um, at the games. But if I remember correctly, I don't think we are related. Just common middle name for the both of us. But we did look into it because it was very curious. <laughs> yeah, it is It is a very common um, surname here in the Philippines. Mm. All right. From Yulo Harrison, um, when did you start? Uh, when did you start? Uh, training with um, the Filipino Americans in California? Uh, so I think my season ended second week of November or I don't know, feel so long ago, but sometime <laughs> around then. Um, then straight from Sweden, hopped on a plane after they flew me home, uh, dropped off all my stuff in California. I came. So towards the fourth quarter, towards the end of the fourth quarter of last year, hmm. and then a little crash course with the national team <laughs> and everything took off from there. So really it hasn't even been a year that I've been with them yet. So I'm still learning and still adjusting every time I'm with them. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's been a very busy year for all of you in the team. Oh yeah, <laughs> but and it's fun. It's fun to be busy than having too much time on your hands. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and his second question is: During the AFC game versus Thailand, you have one goal assisted by Chandler, but the ref whistled and did not count that goal. How did you feel about it? Um. I was a little bummed. It would have been great because I think that was the 21st when it started. So I remember telling my mom and she was like, oh, my God, if you score, that would be like the best birthday present ever. And then it happened. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was getting ready to freak out. And then I heard the whistle and I was like, oh, it was that close. But it was a good feeling to know that, OK, this this can happen. This is a thing. And even if it didn't matter if I was the one scoring, I was happy in the end. We won won that game. Right, right. We were all bummed by that. So it was <laughs> <laughs> from Jane Bernardo. What is the most important principle in life that you uphold? Oh, what a serious question. Oh. That is a good question. Mm -hmm. But Honestly, just being grateful for every opportunity, um, even if something doesn't work out, just being given that chance and to keep working at it, because then maybe it'll it won't come around the next time. So just yeah, being grateful for everything. Yep, be grateful. And from Ace, uh, three questions for you: How do you model? Uh, who do you model your game after? I. Can I say myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, I I don't think there's just one person. So growing up, I always watched the Premier League games and then a little bit of La Liga. And 
even the French league, but there's always just players that catch my eye or maybe I'll be on YouTube and I'll see someone's highlights. And I'm just like, oh, I kind of want to try that in the game, see how that works. Or I'm not really, I don't think the greatest at doing like moves. So if I do pull one out, I'm like, oh, it must have like stuck in my mind watching that. But so probably I'll take a little bit from each player that I see and kind of see how I can incorporate that into my own game and just build off of there and make it my own little unique skill. Nice. And the second question is your favorite current um, player or, or team? Player. People are going to love me or hate me for this answer. But my all time favorite is Ronaldo, Mr. CR7 himself. That's why I said, love me or hate me, but don't get me wrong. I think Messi is still a great player, taking nothing away from that. Just my personal favorite. <laughs> um, but, oh, it's just such a hard choice. It definitely ebbs and flows between Manchester United and Real Madrid as my favorite club. But I think I could probably name one from each league. <laughs> but, yeah, those are my top two. Mm, gotcha. It's okay. I'm a messy fan, so it's all right. <laughs> I, said he, I take nothing away from all right. that. <laughs> um, I like to. Yeah. And his third question is, describe your experience during your first Philippine camp. Uh, during the camp, you said? Um, your first Philippine camp. 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 Your first, I think camp. your first time. <laughs> your first time. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it was the great start for me because I think maybe my body was just so exhausted from all the traveling. I actually arrived with like an ear infection. So then I had I was taking medication for that. And I think one of the symptoms was maybe dizziness. And I remember like my first uh, kind of showing with them, I had to stop. I was like, I'm just like not feeling good. I'm starting to get a little like woozy. And I was like, this is not a good start whatsoever. <laughs> but then kind of talked to um, medical staff and they're like asking, they knew I was sick coming into it or just like getting over it. And they were asking like, um, what prescriptions did the doctor give me? And we kind of narrowed it down to that. But after that, I think once I started getting over the sickness fully, I went a little bit better. Everyone from the team was really welcoming, um, talking to me the first day. And I'm a little more shy. So I was kind of like, all right, too many people are talking to me right now. Like, I don't know how to react to this. <laughs> but um, I do remember Liv's uh, theoretical questions. And I think I kind of bonded with them over that because I was just so interested. Like, where was she finding the these questions there's something about like how many sixth graders can you take on um like what three things would you pick to beat out the rest of the group and i think one were like rats apes or something like that and i'm just like these are so out of this world right now it just made me laugh and it was like something i could talk about <laughs> with all of them <laughs> that that's interesting is it like a like, group <laughs> session you had with the team like a getting to know yep. you oh yeah the coaches were involved in it too oh they okay <laughs> interesting okay um fun question next so this is from charlotte patterson um she's actually an assistant researcher for football manager and she covers um a lot of asian football and she's been sharing clips of you playing in sweden recently <laughs> i so did anyway. see some of Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, her question is, I noticed she likes a lot of Pokemon-related posts on social media. What's some of her favorite Pokemon? Ugh, <laughs> oh, do I? I love Pokemon. And I am not afraid to admit that. I have the Pikachu and Eevee Switch. It's just, I know the games come out like towards the end of every year. And now I've been back into it. Um, but Squirtle's my favorite. He's blue. You know, the blue ones always get you. <laughs> um, but I do like Snorlax sometimes, you know. He's just chilling, sleeping, eating, keeping life simple. No stress whatsoever. <laughs> but yes, big Pokemon fan. Right. And her 
serious question now is who inspired or continues to inspire you? Uh, my mom. That simple. Just seeing how hard she's been working, um, growing up, raising three kids on her own, getting us to all our practices, putting us through college. Of course, we had help from the family. I remember my grandparents, um, they would be the ones sometimes picking me up from middle school, taking me to my friend's house. So then they could take me to practice. And then once work finished from DC, she was driving to Virginia to come and pick me up at my friend's house, take me home. She made sure I was doing all my homework, no matter how much I didn't want to, she would stay up with me late at night. And then she would just repeat it and do it the next day. So just seeing the drive and determination that she had um, now trying to do the same and then showing her that it all was worth it and not for nothing. Right. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next question is from um, Arman, but I think you've answered this. His question is, how young were you when you started playing football? You said three, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then from Hanul, do some football football fans tell you that the, you look like Robert Lewandowski? <laughs> um, I don't think I've heard that one before, but I'll take it. You know, an avid goal scorer. Why not? He right. had the infamous five goals in how many minutes? Something <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. So yeah, it's the first time I've actually, um, I I. I look at you <laughs> from next question would be from actually Aaron and Chino have the same question about playing different positions but basically what they're both the, what they're both asking is which position do you think you're best at and what has been the key to your success to be versatile and a threat from any area of the pitch um I I think just to simplify things for me in a game, I do enjoy playing more central um, when it comes to obviously scoring, you know, would you rather be further out wide kind of off of the goal or more direct right in front of it? So I think just from that standpoint alone, it would be in a central position. Now, whether that's like a center forward or a center mid, um, to be honest, I really don't find it that much more different. I think one just has maybe a little more defending and more running, but um, I think it's pretty clear that no matter if that's what the team needs from me, that I'm willing to do it to the best of my ability. And then I forgot the second part. <laughs> um, yeah. So what has been the key to your success to be so versatile and a threat from any area of the pitch? Oh, um, I think, just understanding what needs to be done. Like if I'm kind of, if I'm out wide, for example, and I know we have numbers in the box, then just trusting that my team is going to be there. Maybe an early ball is the option, especially if there's a lot of space, but if their defense is kind of dropped off, maybe if I somehow am going down end line that again, I can rely on my team that they also see the space at the top of the box. So it's somewhere I can lay the ball off into or if it's central. I think, honestly, maybe just understanding all the roles and all the viewpoints of what needs to happen and just putting in that kind of trust for your team to also be on the same page. Okay, this is where I need to go. And just knowing that they're going to be there to help. Right. And and yes, I agree. You really are a threat on from any area of the pitch. <laughs> We've seen that. So I added a rapid fire portion, this or that, just for fun. So I okay. actually actually got these questions from a Swedish podcast that I listen to a lot. Um, <laughs> and which honestly has been a great influence in me creating this um podcast. So it's by uh Mia Eriksson, who's a football analyst, and Amanda Zaza. She's a reporter for TV4 in, in Sweden. So yeah, I hope they don't mind that I'm using this <laughs> fire questions. So just just choose one, okay? Because I think it's fun. Okay. So, all right. So scoring yourself or assisting a goal? Uh, see, I'm not good at this. I need contact. <laughs> what kind of assist is it? Am I like pinging a ball or am I cutting it back? Or like, 
am I doing something crazy? And then what kind of goal am I scoring? <laughs> I can't. I plead the fifth on this question. <laughs> okay. Scoring from a 1v1 or a free kick outside the box. Free kick outside the box. Okay. Scoring a volley or a header. Volley. Better movement or better positioning? Positioning. Okay. Coming on the bench to make an impact to get the win or be in the starting lineup in a game where you either lose or draw? Off the bench to win. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> My last question. <laughs> <laughs> My last question is, um, being that this is football brew and I'm a coffee junkie, so how do you like your coffee? And if you don't drink coffee, what is your preferred beverage? Please don't say water. <laughs> if the coaches are watching, water. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm a, I am a coffee person. I've tried to get better about it because I think a few years ago I was drinking like three or four cups a day just because I like the taste. But now I really like when my mom sends me the vanilla creamer from back home, the powdered mm -hmm. one, because I can't find it here. Um, if I don't have something sweet to put it in, I need at least milk. Just a splash to kind of make it look light, and then I'm good to go. <laughs> My girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, what is your message to the stakeholders of Philippine women's football or football in general? Um, Just to keep supporting not just the women's team, but the men's, but also the youth system growing up. and. Hopefully one day we can have a league, a growing league, and be not not just another women's league, but maybe one of those top three, four women's league for everyone. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much, Kat. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Yeah. It was fun. It Hopefully was. those answers were too bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was fun. I, I like it. Uh, <laughs> I had fun. So, can we guys anytime enjoy the rest of your evening? What's left of it? <laughs> yeah. Have a good day. Enjoy the game. You, and you say you're watching. Yes. Bye. Bye.